right, guys. I'm going to go through kind of how the, the build process of how we take a boat from empty mold to out the door. And the first part for us, like any boat builder or most boat builders, is going to be the gel coat process. And this establishes what color the hull, the cap, the liner, what color your boat's going to be. So here we've got some hatch lids, a liner, and a console. And you see that uh, this is some of them painted, some have it. Um, this is where it starts for us. So we'll come through, paint the color out, and then once this gets to a tack position, we'll move to the next room over here where we apply the skin coat, which is the first layer of fiberglass that goes on there that kind of starts to build out the structure of the part before it goes into infusion. So we can't walk through here because they just shut paint and our feet will get sticky, but we'll circle back up and catch it on the other side over here. In the I guess we circled around here with the parts coming out of getting gel cut and painted and coming to the next step for us, which is the skin coat process. Um, this is where we come through and put a first layer of structural fiberglass onto the mold. And this is typically done out of a chopper gun uh, here. Some guys will hand lay it with rolls and wet out. We use a chopper gun for this. Um, and we do a specific amount of millage around each one of them, uh, make sure that all the seams get putty so that we reduce you know, any chances of error in the part, error and error in the part. But we can address and fix a lot of that here. This is a 24 uh, liner mold. So this is actually the inside, the floor of the boat. You can see where our hatch drains and recesses are, where our console sits, live wells, drain recesses for plugs and all that, and then towers on the side uh, for access into the plumbing of the boat, whether it be the fuel tank, the fuel drain, speaker chases, wires, all that stuff. Uh, to move forward, fish box opening, and then the step up for the forward deck and the, uh, the bow hatch. So this will slide in the boat inside the hull and then it will get capped um, once the boat's complete. But once we get to this step, it'll get done, it'll cure, we'll sand it, scuff it up to kind of open the chemistry back up a little bit and then it'll roll into our infusion department and get bulk, bagged, and infused. And we can walk over there now and kind of show you that process on a few other parts. All right guys, so once the part comes out of our lamination area where it's got its skin coat on, it then rolls in here to our infusion department. And the first step is gonna be a dry bulking process, which is getting all the material in the boat. Um, each boat has its own specific laminate schedule, so some all, they all have some form of fiberglass, carbon, and core sandwich in between it. Here, this is a Delta 18 hull getting ready to be infused. We have our stringer grid pattern laid out on the course for that to bond in post infusion. And then they're getting all the core cut and everything uh, set up so that we can pull the next layer of our transoms all go in on our infusion. So once this is finished, you have a chemically bound part so one monolithic structure when the hull comes out um, which ensures that your transom is 100 percent sealed in the laminate schedule and on the explore version of those which you'll see over here in a second we put all the stringer grid in with our infusions as well um, so it gives us the strongest most rigid lightest part that we can get but each of those things are really critical um, as far as the strength and longevity of the boat is making sure that we take any air, an air void and air pocket out of the equation, uh, which infusion does for the most part. Um, and this is kind of step one of that. So once we get all this in and all our material in, then we'll come down and move to the bagging process, which um, is going on right over here. So we'll show you that in just a sec. But this is kind of the next big step. And then once this is complete, we'll move to bagging, which we'll take you over here and show you what that looks like right now. All right, so once we've got everything bulked in the boat, we'll come in and bag the boat which we take and put all our different resin delivery pieces in here. We'll take and pull vacuum down on the boat, remove all of the air. The boat will then sit for about 30 minutes to make sure that it's airtight and we got to pull a lock off all the way around. And then we'll start to introduce resin back into the boat, which is what you're seeing happen right now. This is vacuum infusion. So what happens is we take and use these lines to pull all the air out of the part and create an air-free environment under this bag, similar to the experiment everybody did in physics class in seventh or eighth grade where the penny and the feather fall at the same rate we're creating that vacuum under here so this resin is not necessarily being sucked in by the vacuum pump it's replacing the voids left by air in the vacuum so it gives us the most lab-like chemically strong process you know reinforced plastics fiberglass production process you can get is through this type of infusion this is a carbon x7 um, 
so you'll kind of see, you can look through here as he's filming to see kind of the resin moving through the part. So as you can see in here, anything that's got resin and speeding the part, we'll open these lines up as a schedule. You can see how the outside ones are not open right now. We'll open those as soon as resin starts to hit it, and then it'll fill the whole boat up and come to the top. We'll go and pull the bag and everything else out of it, hoses and all that, and it'll look like these two parts right here. This is an X7, a 13 cap, and a Delta 18 cap. As you can see which one's carbon fiber, which one is glass. And we'll go through and drop wedges around all the flanges on this to pop the part out of the mold. Once it comes out of the mold, we'll have to go through and trim everything back, cut these flanges, live well, pass recesses out, and then it'll go into our finishing department before it gets bonded together in the boat. Alright, so once we've gotten the parts pulled and gotten them cut, they're then coming to our finished department. Um, this is the Delta 18 and tan. See, it's already got its liner bonded into it. And then we just go through and finish all the joints, back gel anywhere that needs back gelling, and then finish out any areas where there's some imperfections, whether it be some heat or bad paint or something like that, or something that may come out of the mold wrong. This is where all of that gets addressed, and this is kind of the the main big step of QC, making sure that the finish of the boat is polished perfectly before it hits our rigging floor. As you can see we tape all the non-skid edges like she's doing right here so that we can sand and buff up against it and not reduce any of the gripability of that. Um, you can see how this looks a lot different than what we saw over there. It's got its hatches cut out. This has got our live well already bonded in the back. We've got to cut the top recess on that to get into it. Um, and then the same here for this liner being bonded in here. So this, this is getting ready to go out on our rigging floor here this afternoon. All right, so now that we got the boat out of cut and grind and assembly, it comes up front into our rigging area. And this is an X7 uh, on carbon boat. You can kind of see some of how we start to put this together. The liner's bonded in, the glass and tab in our fuel tank, starting to get our rod tubes put in, and then starting to get the back of the boat squared away with bilge pumps, wiring, harnesses, all your motor mounts and everything, and then it'll take it to get capped. But you can kind of see how some of this goes together. Carbon versus fiberglass with this boat, we typically save about 300 pounds of weight going to a full carbon structure with us. Um, we still put a, a layer of glass on the outside bottom of the hull just from a um, sound reduction standpoint. Carbon can be really loud and uh, insulated properly. Um, you can see how much space here, kind of see an idea. Um, we've got a finished boat here too, so you can kind of see how this process goes from open to complete. But this is where our skiffs all start, as if they come out of the rigging with the liner bonded in the hull, um, and then the cap will be separate. So moving here, we've got a X7 that's complete, getting ready to go on trailer and be delivered this afternoon. Um, it has, it's got its cap on, um, you see all of our hatches, uh, gas shops on every single one of them. Um, on this configuration with their X7 and 13, you get a standard 28 gallon live well, ovular well in the middle, the two 33 gallon storage boxes on the outer side, and a 60 gallon box here that opens jointly. I'll show you that on another boat that's just picked up. Um, um, so you can see this one opens, opens out, and the other one opens outboard. So, you can store your stuff you're not needing to get to on an everyday basis or every hour basis in here because you'll be sitting on it. And then anything you need to get to with high frequency, you got that seat beside you that you can open up and get to. Um, but we try to keep all of our pumps and wiring in a dry area. Um, so a power pole pump, your motor harness, your relays typically live in this box so that it stays dry uh, and not in the bilge in a wet environment. Like it just gives you a little more longevity to those parts. All Jim Lux compression lines. Um, you can see on our console here, this one's got a Garmin set up. Um, you get a ton of storage in your console, too. Enough room for all your, your house battery and trolling battery to stay in there. 
This one has got two mm -hmm. ion lithiums in it. Um, oh, God, sorry. Again, to reduce the weight footprint of the boat. Ford, you can see they're in this hatch right now, getting some of the uh, tower of weight stuff like yeah. the tower, but really big front access. 27 gallons of fuel in the front of the boat to kind of add some ballast to the bow. Uh, and then a lot of big storage. You can fit five, five gallon buckets in that front box as well when it's complete. Um, four undergone rod tubes on each side that are um, bonded to the side of the hull. And then our specific seat or rod holding in the back. And then we try to roll match with the hull. Uh, okay.